Nathan, do you think you could ever be really prepared to be a parent? I mean, you just read some books and the manual, the owner's manual for the kids. Right. And then you're ready, right? Right. That's right. You yeah. too can have kids. <laughs> I don't think you can ever be prepared to be a parent. No, but you can't. Hopefully in this episode, we can give you a few things to think about and to help prepare you. Let's do it right now. Hey, I'm Andrea. I'm Nathan. And you've joined us for Marriage by Design. And today is our Family Friday podcast. Yeah. Where we talk to you about Happy Friday. all things family, God's design for family, what the Bible has to say about it, and some things we've learned along the way. That's exactly right. And today we're going to be digging into becoming parents. Yeah. So we want to talk a little bit with you about what it means to be a parent. Um, this is going to be a perfect video for you if you are a new parent or if you are maybe your wife's pregnant um, or so you're to going be to be or you yeah. are pregnant and you're going to be... Um, are you pregnant? I'm not pregnant oh. right at the moment, uh, <laughs> contrary to... No, that's not true. Uh, so yeah, this is a perfect video for that. Also, if you are watching and maybe you're going... Man, those days are way in the rear view mirror uh, or, you know, whatever the case may be. Man, I would I would ask you share this with someone that you know that is in this boat that is maybe newly married and considering parenting or uh, is a new parent themselves. Strongly encourage you to send this over to them. We're going to talk a little bit about what does it look like to parent according to God's design. Take a look at what the Bible says there. What are kids? How should we be thinking about them? And then we're going to just give you some practical tips. Um, Andrea has been a parent four times over, mm -hmm. uh, and I have as well. Uh, and oh, so we're going to share uh, so just some tips and pointers that we've picked up along the way. Hopefully make your life a little bit easier if you find yourself becoming a parent yeah you know our parenting journey started almost 11 years ago and so in a way we're 11 years into parenting but in a way too we're just beginning partially because we have a baby but also because every every child is different and every new right. season of parenting exactly right. is different with different, right. with every child so we begin again in different season all the time and that's the same with parenting at any stage you're always seasoned but also beginning again that's right so if you clicked on this video and you are becoming a parent again we actually will be doing a video specifically for you uh, this is this is in particular for people that are becoming parents for the first time but we are going to be doing a video about becoming parents again where we talk about you know some tips with regards to integrating a new baby into your family right yeah, so let's talk first about what does the Bible have to say about parenting? What is parenting according to the Bible? Because we can just kind of wing it and just go through parenting doing what we think is best. I don't know. But we should be parenting according to what God says. Let's let's know what God says so we know what we should be doing, right? That's right. What does what the world say about parenting, babe, the world around us? As you think about just generally, what do you think the world would say parenting is or kids are yeah i think it's managing children until they're out of your home okay all right i mean that's really very basic but i think that's kind of what parenting is um you know yeah managing children till they're out of your home and trying to uh i think a lot of the world is very you know child centric but yeah. trying to trying to uh to, i think a lot of the world is like trying to make sure that the child is happy and yep. grows up to be happy and we're all we're a lot about ha the world not we but the world is a lot about trying to make sure that our kids are happy and that's certainly right. we want that for our own children but that's but there's a lot of expense to that sometimes not necessarily financially but that but that isn't right you know? and even more insidious than that as I feel like you're spot on that a lot of people are obsessed with the happiness of their children but I feel like when you kick that log a little bit and figure out well why 
our people that way, it really comes back to trying to find their validation through their children. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, let's just call it what it is, that's essentially being a parasite with your own children. Mm. Right? I mean, you're using your children to get your own validation, and that never works out. Um, at the end of the day, you're going to have neither validation nor a functional relationship with your children mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Um, so that whole pursuit of happiness is a, a siren, to use Greek mythology, that can never be found. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, will really tank your relationship with your kids. And that's so tragic. Because you're right. I mean, I think the world's obsession is, is with exactly that. So, so how does that compare to what the Bible says about children and about parenting? Right. So let's talk about a few things about what what the Bible says parenting should be. So first is that parenting or children are a blessing, Mm -hmm. right? And we had some discussion about that. Um, So we'll talk about Psalm 127, 3 through 5 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the um, the fruit of the womb, a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are children of... Are the children of one's youth. <laughs> Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks uh, with his enemies in the gates. So it's saying that children are a reward. They're a blessing. But to be honest, they don't feel like that all the time. No. You know, that there's a lot of parenting that doesn't feel like a blessing or a reward or a gift or any of that. So um, we had some conversation about that. You know, children aren't. First of all, our feelings aren't really what is reality a lot of times. That's our feelings right. do not equal truth. So just because I feel like <laughs> this parenting thing does not feel like a gift and my children do not feel like a blessing right now mm-hmm. doesn't mean that it's not a gift or a blessing. So what is the blessing? Well, one of them is that they're your heritage. They are your legacy. Um, they, they, You get children to carry on your a piece of you and and um your name and all that sort of thing you know but but your children get to go forth and out into the world and um be a piece of you continuing on in the world and hopefully more and more and more generations to follow um as your legacy but but also a blessing is that each child created is a piece of god Mm -hmm. here on earth and so god has put characteristics in them that are a part of him and that are uniquely theirs that reflect the Lord. And that's that in and of itself is a beautiful gift because all of us are different and all of us reflect the Lord differently. And uh, a child coming into our family is a reflection of the Lord. And that that's a great it's an gift incredible that thing. we can, we're allowed to see more of God because of each child that's in our home. Right. So that in and of itself is a beautiful gift. And if our mind is, put on that frequently it takes um a way that sometimes the challenge of this does not feel like a gift right now right and we think of gifts so often as i get a gift i open it up and then i have the gift and it's, it's an it's and an gift immediate is usually like this is great all the time right it's you know? an immediate short-term gratification that's a gift mm. I don't believe that this verse intends to paint children that way. Um, And I think that the indication of that is the like arrows, right? Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. The blessing of an arrow, if, if you're a hunter or you know hunters, the blessing of an arrow is that it is a tool that's to be used for a specific purpose. Right when you fire that out of your bow, it goes where you want it to go, okay. and it kills <laughs> the thing that you're trying to kill. Uh, right, if you're hunting, and I look at that and I think that simple tool, that arrow, that didn't just appear. I mean, someone took time crafting that and um, either sanding it if it's a wooden arrow, or um, you know, melting it down and and polishing it out and um, you know, creating that tool. It was something that took time so that in the moment when when you fire it, it does the purpose it's intended to do. In that way, the blessing of children is not the rush that you get when you're in the hospital and the child arrives. But that is a blessing? Of course it is. (laughs) The blessing is the opportunity to play a role 
in the uh, such an intimate role in the life of a being created in the image of God that has had the life of God breathed into it, mm-hmm. right? That spark of life. Doesn't matter how many generations we move forward in science, we might be able to do, you know, in vitro and all these fancy things to 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 create the circumstances for life to come together, but we don't know how to breathe that spark of life into cells that have come together. Only God can do that even as smart as we are today, and we get an opportunity to play a role in that. Right. That's a huge blessing and a huge responsibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so children are a blessing, they're a reward, and for us to remember that while we're parenting is is super important. It's great. So then um, we're also to, I know this is not going to be like, shocking to you but we are to love our children what (laughs) and interestingly the bible does not talk very much about that maybe because that's just a natural thing that we do but we are to love our children so one of the verses is titus 2 4 talking to women um and it says and train the young women to love their husbands and their children Mm. so so it's talking about what older women should be doing and how they should be mentoring but one of the things is to mentor them to to love their husbands and their children. So we should be loving our children and loving them well and yep. loving them with the love of Christ. It's good. So then, um, and then Psalm 103, 13 in that vein also says, just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. So love, compassion with our children. Yep. It's good. I mean, I re- remember that even psychologically, your children look at you as the supreme authority in their life. So if you're raising your children from a Christian worldview standpoint, they're going to look at you as God in their life Mm -hmm. until they make their own decision about God as they get older. Which means we have to answer for the reflection of God that we're showing to our kids. And that's where that compassion and that love really comes in because... We don't worship a God that is angry and vengeful as just a part of who he is. Mm -hmm. Um, And yet so many people walk around this earth looking at God their father as this angry, um, vengeful, um, spiteful being that's just trying to get them. And I fear that that's a reflection of their parenting and the way that they started thinking about God through their parents at the time that they were very mm-hmm. young. Yeah. That's a great point. Okay. So then another, another, um, in way that we're required that we're called to parent from the Bible is, um, we're called to disciple our children. So mm-hmm. we're called to, to, um, help make our children students of the Lord mm-hmm. to disciple them. So Proverbs twenty nine fifteen. um, Oh, sorry. Discipline. <laughs> discipline. Disciple, yes. That comes later. Oh, yes. In what we're talking about. The discipline. I just read the word wrong. Okay. So, we're called to discipline our children, which is so hard. Yeah, it is. Sometimes. Because I would like, in my flesh, I would like to just... First of all, I'd love to have perfect children. <laughs> but I'd also like to just not have to do the hard work of discipline. Because I sure. know that it hurts them. It hurts me. And I like to just kind of gloss over that sort of thing. But we can't do that because I'm not really truly loving them well if I'm not disciplining them and teaching them the right things. Yeah, that's right. You know? So, um, Proverbs twenty nine fifteen: the rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings, uh, brings shame to his mother. So, yeah, a, a kid who's not disciplined lacks wisdom. And really, it says the Bible talks about if we don't discipline our children, we don't love them. Yeah, it actually makes the command to us as parents that we drive foolishness from our children mm-hmm. with discipline. I mean, your your child's, and you may be going preach, brother, but your children, your child's natural state is foolishness. Yeah. Because they're going to be born into a world that is given over to original sin and a lifestyle of sin, and so they're natural man state is going to be foolishness and it's up to us as parents to drive that from them through discipline yep yep 
So then um, another verse just for you, Proverbs 19, 18, discipline your son for there is hope. Do not set your heart on putting him to death. So discipline is super important. Be consistent in your discipline. There mm-hmm. is hope. Trip. <laughs> Be consistent. Um, and and there, that's, it's good for them, but, but know that there's a reward for that. Trip. It's good. Okay. So next is the disciple. Teach them about the Lord. Teach them about the gospel, about God's faithfulness. I mean, there's so much, especially in the Old Testament, about teaching about God's faithfulness Mm -hmm. and um, reminding them of the great things that he's done. And that that gives hope, right? Talking about the, the amazing things that the Lord has done and that we worship that God who's done these things in my life gives hope mm-hmm, and, totally. and strengthens faith. So Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9 says, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doors, doorposts of your house and on your gates. So what is that saying? We should be talking about the Lord All and his time. goodness and uh, about things of the Bible and, and his faithfulness all the time. It should be what we're reading about, what we're, what we're discussing. It should be everything all the time, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so super important to train our children. It's not just a, we go to church once a week and, oh, we've checked the box. We've done the, we've done the it's Christian good, thing, you yeah. know, yeah. it's, it. It should be your life. Yeah. Yeah. And this really goes a lot to what kind of culture have you created in your home? Mm-hmm. Um, because certainly none of us, you know, Andrew and I don't walk around just talking about God all every day while the kids are awake. Um, no. You know, we do other things. We Trust. hang out with them. But but it's- we've intentionally created a culture where that's a given that we're thinking about those things. And you know, for us, an indication of that is that there are times just throughout the day where our kids will relate things that are going on around them to spiritual truths, right? Not all the time, but but enough that I know they're thinking about those things as they're laying down and as they're rising up and mm-hmm. as they're going about their lives. And then, you know, certainly we have intentional, you know, time for teaching the things of right. God as well. But yeah, that discipling piece, you know, that word disciple... Babe, what's it come from? Latin. Latin. Do you remember the Latin word? Discipuli. Discipulis. That's right. What does it mean? Student. 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 That's right. So we use disciple, discipling as a churchy word. Um, and it does have church applications. But at the base, the base word is a Latin word that means student. So we are called to be students of our Lord and Savior, but we're called to pass that on to the younger right. students in class Many of which are living and growing up or will be in your home. Teach your children how to be students of the Lord. That's right. And you may be going, man, we've done a poor job of that within our marriage. How am I going to do that with this new baby that we're expecting? This is the great part is you can start. Your your child will never know that that was or wasn't something that you were intentional about before they were born. Put that as a stake in your sand, in the sand, you and your spouse now to make that a part of, of what your house is you know, leading up to the baby and once the baby comes. So a few things with that. How do you, so if you're thinking like, how do you make that as a part of your life all the time? Well, if we have conversations, when we're having conversations with our kids, we may bring in some scripture with that. Mm -hmm. Not as like a, oh, I need to talk about some scripture, but, but it just kind of comes in naturally. Like, well, this is what the Bible says about that. Um, be anything, you know, beauty is from the Lord. So anything that we find beautiful, we can talk about, Thanking the Lord for that, and um, you know his his creation and how mm-hmm. that points to Him, and all that all that sort of thing. So those are just some ways that we talk about the Lord kind of in our, our everyday life. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Okay. Um, then there's so many. There's so much in the Bible about about discipling our children and about um, teaching them so much. Yeah, Psalm 78, 4 says, We will not hide them from our children. From We will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. Yeah, 
And then 2 Timothy 3.15, And how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So that's That's teaching about the gospel. Yeah, so totally encourage you guys as you're preparing for your child to dig into these verses and kind of see where it goes from there. But but really read over these and think about, well, what application does that have to the way we're going to raise this child? Yep. Okay, and then the next... The next one is we're called to provide for them. I know that seems obvious, but provide for them in every way, though. Um, Mm -hmm. Not just I need to give them a roof over their head and food and all that, which is, of course, important. But provide for them emotionally, spiritually, physically, and and mentally. Make sure that they're they're provided for. So um, 1 Timothy 5.8, but if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of of his household he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever ouch yeah so we're we're called to provide for our children in second corinthians 12 14 for children are not obligated to save up for their parents but parents for their children so again we need to be providing for our own for our own kids it's good yep okay um the bible is pretty clear on this next one to not exacerbate or provoke our children to anger. Yeah. Um, which is a super interesting. I think that's such a niche thing that the Bible is clear about. And I find that really interesting. But um, Colossians 3.21, fathers do not exacerbate your children so that they will not lose heart. And then Ephesians 6.4, fathers do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the, dis- the discipline and instruction of the Lord. I think it can be so, so easy as a parent, at least for me, to... Um, have this thought of, well, I'm the one in control. Yeah. And you're just going to do what I'm, you know, you're just going to do what I'm going to, what I'm going to tell you. And sometimes I'm going to make you do that in a way that makes you really angry. Yeah. (laughs) Because, because whatever, you know, yeah, I'm going to exert my control kind of thing. Right. I I think the question is, what's the heart attitude behind that? Because I guarantee you, if your kids are going to grow up to be, functional members of polite society you're going to do things to make them angry of course yeah but if but if the heart is um i'm just gonna tweak them with my control yeah sure um and it's gonna make them mad but i'm the parent that's what i get to do yeah that's not right right and sometimes we can exert our control a little bit too much um but that's not the attitude like trying to make them angry because you have that you have that control over them or you have that authority over them is something that we're we're called to stay away from as parents. Right. Yeah, that's right. You know, and a that's lot of times exactly that right. that can really lead to a lot of rebellion um in kids when you're just kind of poking at them. Yeah, that's exactly right. <clears throat> yeah. Good babe, thanks for sharing those. I, I think it's super important for us always to go back to what God's word says about any topic that we're looking at. So certainly this was not an exhaustive list of passages that talk about, Oh my gosh, there's, you know, children, parent relationships. Yeah. Go look at the Bible and see all that it has to say about parenting because there's so many verses and a lot of them are very similar, but there's so much in the Bible about, about parenting. Yeah, that's right. Totally. So if you want more information or more depth on the items that we just talked about above, we actually did a show um, back a couple of months ago all about the responsibilities of parents. So I will link to that here so you can click on it and watch that. But uh, otherwise, let's transition then to giving some advice Mm. to soon to be or new parents. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things that I can think of to give advice on, but the Excuse me. The first thing I would say um, is learn what the Bible has to say about parenting. Yeah. <laughs> learn for yourself. Look at it for yourself. Yeah, that's ask, right. And then always ask the Lord for for wisdom. Um, as a, as a mom, I can get totally caught up in I don't know what to do in this situation, so I'm going to either ask a friend or look at it online or whatever. And my first my my first you know, help to run to should be the Lord yeah. and ask for his wisdom. James 1 5 says, talks about if anyone lacks wisdom, ask the Lord and he'll give it generously. Right. Um, and, and that's a promise. So my, 
my first line of defense when I don't know what the heck I'm doing should be always to go to the Lord and say, give me wisdom because he created that child. He knows that child more intimately than I do. And so what better resource than the Lord yeah. and asking him, how do I deal with this? Yeah, that's good. You know, a big piece of parenting is we put this pressure on ourselves when we become parents to know it all. Mm-hmm. And you won't know it all. And that's okay. And once your kids are grown and you have three or four or five of them in your home, you still won't know it all. Nope. And for us, man, that's freeing, right? For one thing, it frees us to be reliant on the Holy Spirit, which is exactly where the Lord wants us, Mm -hmm. right? When you look at the issues that the Lord had with characters throughout the history of the Old Testament and New Testament, one of the things that he identified as an inherent problem with humanity is that he it's really hard for us to come to a position of reliant on him of reliance on him if we think we know it all ha- are financially set or mm-hmm. are full of knowledge that you know we can hoard up right it's reliance upon the lord is critical mm-hmm. so recognizing you don't know it all and here's what i would encourage you don't be ashamed to admit that to your kids I think our kids also think we know it all Mm -hmm. when they're young, right? Then they become teenagers and realize apparently we know nothing. Um, (laughs) But when when we're young, they think we know everything. Um, And so admitting when you're wrong, right, which is one way of doing that, and also going to them when it's appropriate at time from time to time and saying, you know what, I don't necessarily know everything about what I'm doing when I'm raising you. I'm trying to do the best um, as honoring to the Lord, but I don't know everything about what I'm doing and I appreciate you loving me even though I don't know everything that I'm doing it can really impact our kids and help them to understand man I need to rely on the Lord too because if even mom and dad don't know everything about what they're doing what what hope is there for me right yep that's great so then another piece of advice I would say is pray often pray lots um for your kids for yourself pray so yeah. spend a lot of time in prayer. Um, 1 Thessalonians five sixteen through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And I think that's <clears throat> such a great verse um, in parent. I mean, in, in life, of course. But in parenting, it, a lot of times can be a slog. Yeah. And it can, it can feel overwhelming. And it can feel like there's nothing to be thankful for or not in this moment or to rejoice for, but God calls us to rejoice and be thankful. And there are things to be thankful for. And that can just, just turning, choosing to turn from a poopy attitude to being thankful, find, finding something to be thankful for and rejoicing in the Lord can change course massively. That's exactly right. First Chronicles sixteen eleven says, look to the Lord and his strength, seek his face. I always. love that. This isn't even just about prayer. I mean, this ties into how we do our personal, you know, Bible study as well, because that's a big piece of how we seek the face of the Lord to get to know him. And man, that seek his face always so important, always, always, but particularly when you have kids, because there are so many things that come up when you have kids that you go, man, I don't know how to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, maybe it's something you've never dealt with in your life, and it can be easy to freak out in that moment instead of doing what we really should be training ourselves to do even now as a new or soon-to-be parent, which is, man, I don't know why this baby's crying. I could try and figure it all out, or before I do that, I could seek the Lord first. It's yeah. good discipline to start yeah. even, when the, even when your baby's an infant. And it certainly is a good thing to seek out help and advice and all that, too. Sure. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so the next thing I would say is build your circle. Hopefully yeah. you can you you do this before you're having a baby or before you're a new parent, but if you haven't dedicate the the time and the energy to build your circle. What's that mean, babe? So people in your life who are doing life along with you, even even people who are speaking life into you, you know, some mentors, which we've talked about in episode, we had a whole month dedicated to mentoring, having some people to, to mentor you. Um, but also having friends that you're doing life with who love you, who love your kids that 
you can bounce things <clears> off <throat> of and ha- that you know will pray for you when you need it. Um, that if you're a mom, oh, I'm speaking from a mom's perspective, you can have play dates with and mm-hmm. and um, not go, you know, you guys can go crazy in your own minds together <laughs> because <laughs> kids drive you crazy sometimes. Mm. You know, yeah, you can all get though. together and the kids can all drive you crazy, but at least you're together. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I was thinking of. But but build your circle. Have those people around you that you get to do life with because being a parent that's isolated is so hard, in my opinion. I think it's so hard to do parenting isolated. Yeah. So build your circle. Yeah, and be in te- that build your circle is she that's intentionally worded. Like be intentional about choosing the people that are in your circle. Yeah, and it may take time for you to find out really who those people are that are going to stick around. That's okay. And it may take a lot of resources from you. And I mean particularly time and emotional resources to to sew into those. People probably aren't coming to you and saying Oh, your new mom, come be part of our circle. You know, it's just, that's not that they don't want you to be. It's just not, I don't know. It's just not the natural thing. So take the, the time and the energy to reach out to other people, have them over to your house, um, whatever, you know, build your circle. It's good, babe. Okay. Uh, the next piece is remember you and your spouse are on the same team. So your greatest gift to your kids is going to be a marriage that is a loving and God-centered marriage. That's so so key. And a loving and God-centered home. So that's your greatest gift to your kids. I know you probably think that your greatest gift to your kids is going to be putting them front and center and trying to make them happy. But it's not because happiness changes. Like this makes right. them happy one day and then this right. and this and this and this and this. Um, and then you find out you give them everything they want and they're not still still not happy. But what what gives security, what gives um, joy and fulfillment is having a loving, God centered marriage and home that yeah. they that they can feel secure in. That's right. That security piece is so huge. Mm-hmm. I mean, when we take away a child's security, it is open season on them from a psychological and emotional standpoint. So man, being so intentional while the child's young about dating each other, about focusing on your relationship, completely rejecting that temptation to make it all about the kids. Those are all crucial pieces. Yeah. And then that remembering you're on the same team, like when you're starting to feel like this child, I think this can happen a lot of times when the child is really young and those newborn baby things can be in, Mm -hmm. intense and sleep is not consistent and anyway it's hard and remembering we're on the same team let's not get into fights about things let's not let's not go you know i don't know let's not fight about stuff that doesn't matter yeah so remember you're on the same team um Parenthood and everything that goes along with it is not necessarily natural. This would be my next advice. So I'm thinking about like breastfeeding. So, so many moms think breastfeeding should be natural. Like it's the natural thing. So it should come easy. It does not. It is hard. Um, I've had four kids and it's never been natural anytime. You know, it's taken work and it's kind of a cluster sometimes. And it's, it's weird. And breastfeeding. Breastfeeding. Yeah. yeah it just... It takes work and effort, and then at some point it becomes natural. Sure. But um, so don't ever think that parenting, being a mom, being a dad, should be natural. And uh, come I, something's naturally. wrong, or yeah. come naturally. Something's yeah. wrong with me if it doesn't, because that's not true. So, um, and breastfeeding is a great example. Um, another example is like bonding. And I can speak to that. I struggled so much bonding with our first child, with Jackson. Um, you know, I think I had some postpartum depression that wasn't that I didn't really recognize, and yeah. that was part of the problem. Um, had I been honest and spoken up, that could have been something that was t- that was dealt with, but mm-hmm. I wasn't, and and I really, really struggled for a long time to bond with Jackson, and. Um, so just even being honest about I'm struggling to to feel like much of anything for this kid, you mm. know, like I'm happy to take care of him, but 
whatever, being, being honest about this doesn't feel natural and, and I need some prayer. I need some help. Yep. Whatever. So just not feeling like everything should come natural. Yeah, that's good. And, and speaking, when you have your circle, speaking openly with those in your circle about that is, I think, is a key. I mean, I remember we were standing around with a group of, of folks, but a number of them were women with young children. And someone mentioned that postpartum baby mm-hmm. blues thing. And every single person around the table said, man, I dealt with that too. And these are all people that were pretty close friends with each other and none of them had ever talked about it with each Mm. other before that moment. Mm. And I thought, man, just being the one that is bold enough to say, hey, here's something I'm dealing with. What do you think about this? Can really be a load off of the other people that are around and allow you guys to carry that burden together. Yeah, so don't feel like you're doing something wrong if things don't come, if they don't feel natural to you. Right. Um, another, another advice, ask for help or accept help. Yeah. Don't feel like you need to do this thing on your own. I've gotten better as I've had more children asking for help, particularly from our parents. Um, but yeah. And when people say, Hey, how can I help you? Or can I bring you a meal or whatever? Yep. You can surely bring me a meal. You can help me. I can't get the laundry done. Can you come over and fold my laundry? Whatever. Um, don't be, don't feel like you should have to do this on your own. Raising kids is hard. So get help if it's, if it's there, get help. Yeah. Humanity in general is a team sport. Um, human beings are, we're, we're amazing creatures when we work together. When we allow ourselves to become isolated, we can become really pathetic creatures Mm. um, as well. So don't recognize that this is... This human, this human being thing, it's a team sport. Right. Um, and if other people want to help come alongside us, you know, let's let's accept that. It'd be great. Yeah, including your spouse. Like Totally. You know, if your spouse is like, how can I help you? Tell them. Right. <laughs> Don't expect right. them to just know. Yeah, I want to help with the breastfeeding. Oh, boy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yikes. Okay. <laughs> uh, the next thing that I piece of advice or tip or whatever that I would say is um, when you have a baby, your life and your schedule are no longer your own. And for me, that was a very, very hard transition. Yeah. Um, to And I don't think for you it was. Not as much. I think I just expected it. I come from a big family. Yes. But for me, that was a rough transition yeah. um, in that my life and my schedule and nothing was my own anymore. I don't get to make my own decisions for myself anymore. Yeah. Um, and that was hard. And, and it took a long, it took a while for me to understand that. So, yeah. so I think my advice would be understanding that it, it sometimes takes a while to really get it and understand that and kind of be okay with that and that's okay if you have if you need to go through a grieving process of i don't get to decide things for my own anymore some a little this this little bean is deciding a lot of my schedule um yeah it's true and it won't always be that way but but it may take you a while to to be okay with that yeah this is a big thing for for new parents that i think i think can they can easily be in denial about um, because you think like, okay, we'll have a child and we'll just, you know, we'll keep doing the things we're doing, but our child will be a part of that. And it just, it doesn't work out that way. Yeah. Um, the child's got their schedule, um, and they're going to sleep when they want and be awake when they want. There's certainly things we can do to try and help affect that. But at the end of the day, <laughs> they might work, they might not work. Um, and you know, that's, we just have to throw up our hands and say, you know, Lord be my strength in these days because, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to do what they want to do. Yeah. So. Okay. Next, next tip. Don't expect your spouse to parent the same way that you do. So, uh, I am super controlling and, and very impatient and neurotic and <laughs> that makes Whoa. it really hard for me to just not want to control Nathan and how he parents and be super impatient with him when he doesn't parent the way that that I should, I would parent and be completely neurotic with it. So I have to tame that and I'm constantly asking the Lord to um, 
give me patience and take away my crazy desire to control. Fortunately, her and I are pretty much aligned in every parenting area, so she never has to oh my worry gosh. about that. He's so different than me in parenting. Yes. And I've become really grateful for that, but for a long time, I really tried to control how he parented. And I yeah. still do, because that's my natural tendency, which is terrible, and I'm sorry. I forgive you. Um, but thankfully, he's also a guy who's like, <laughs> okay, Andrea, and then he does what he wants to do, you know? Um, not in a way of like trying to make me mad, but it's just like, you're not going to, he's not, I, he's not going to let me control him, but he's also not going to make a fight about it either. Yeah. Um, that's been a learned behavior too. For sure. For yeah. Me. Um, but so yeah, don't, don't expect your spouse to parent the way that you do. They have a unique way. And as long as they're not neglecting or being harmful or something like that, if, if they're still doing good parenting things then that's okay right and maybe there's yeah maybe there's some things that you need to say oh well it really goes better if you put the baby down at 9 30 instead of 11 (laughs) 30. it was 10 (laughs) 30. that happened to us today he was here with the kids and i was serving at church and i called after church and he was like oh yeah i just put the baby down i was like what I thought the baby, the baby went down, down like an hour and a half ago. I thought the baby went down at 1030. And that baby was in bed at 1030, <laughs> let me tell you. But did it really? I just laughed and was like, oh my gosh, okay. Well, whatever. Because did it really matter? Nope. Well, Lincoln loved it. He had a blast <laughs> for an extra hour. It didn't matter. We just gave him a short nap and then he had a really long afternoon nap, you know? And probably... There are other times in my life where I would have been like, what are you doing? You know? Yeah. yeah. But we've learned a lot in four kids. And there are definitely are still times where I am super controlling. But, um, you know, he, he's not doing anything harmful. So. Yeah, you realize if you're a new parent, here's the thing. Here's the takeaway from this. <clears throat> you will realize a lot of the things you're tempted to fight about with your child not are it. not big deals. Right? So just take our word for it and just settle on... Mm-hmm. Take, being able to take that step back and say, is this a big deal? Probably not. Yep. Okay, so my next tip is read, 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 read. And I don't mean read up on parenting. I mean read to your kids. So one of the greatest things that you can do for their, for their um, intellectual health and their, intellectual, their intelligence is to read to them. And so start young. Start when they're just a few days old. I've read to my itty bitties from the time that we brought them home until, I mean, I still read to Jackson. So it's a really fun thing to, you get great snuggles and (laughs) you, I don't know, it's such a fun thing to do with your kids and it really broadens their imaginations. Mm -hmm. Um, It's such a great thing to do together and it's a nice calm activity too, especially well, I'm jumping ahead because this is like for next week. But if you have, if you're bringing a new baby home, it's a great thing to do with your the ones who are older. Yeah, to connect with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's good. Read. Spoiler read a lot alert to your kids. for next week. Yes. So it's good. I love reading. We read. 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 Read, read, read. Yep. Read. And then um, a really practical tip: don't try to keep a quiet environment for babies. Yeah, this is a good one for new parents. Yeah. So. Babies come home and they're super used to the womb where it's loud and they, they're they going along doing everything mom does, right? Which is sometimes vacuuming and everything. So they're used to loud. Don't create this like quiet environment when they sleep. Keep things, do normal things. Vacuum the hallway when they're sleeping in their bedrooms and they'll they'll stay used to just noise when they're sleeping so that <laughs> when other babies come along or when they're in a different environment or whatever, they're not woken up by every little thing because they're not used to having quietness. You know, yeah, that's they're not the used to everything being quiet all the time when yep. they sleep. Yep. Yep. So don't right. make a quiet, a quiet environment all the time when they're sleeping. It's good. Get them used to loud noises. That's right. That's right. So maybe you listened to these and you thought, man, I have some questions about that. Uh, if you are a new parent or we're going to be a new parent, um, feel free to put those in the comments below. We'd love to respond to those. We'll respond to every single one. Um, you're welcome. If you're listening to this on audio only, you can shoot us an email. That's marriage by design podcast at gmail.com. We will respond to all of those as well. 
So man, if you are about to have a baby, congrats. If you have just had a baby, congrats as well. Babies are a huge blessing. Um, and uh, man, we've loved the heck out of all of our babies and continue to love them as they've gotten older, as you will as well. Yeah. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. And remember, God is for your new family. Hey, thanks for joining us on Marriage by Design. If you were impacted by this video, like it by hitting the thumbs up below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And once you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when new episodes release. Excellent. Also, one of the huge pillars of our show is interactivity between us and you. So we would love you to comment down in the comments below if you have thoughts about this video or if you have questions or other things you'd like to, like to see considered in the future. In addition, if you'd like, you can email us. That's marriagebydesignpodcast at gmail.com. We're also on Instagram at marriagebydesignpodcast, or you can find us on Facebook by searching Marriage by Design Podcast. Finally, if you want to, you can tweet at us. We do have a Twitter account that is at marriagexdesign. Thanks, and have a great day.